Shalom, and welcome to our 20th annual Feast of Tabernacles. This is part three of Preparing for Rulership. And I love the examples that Yahweh has given me and us. Especially when I look at Goliath and the little boy David. And I look at Goliath America. And the little boy, Yahweh the Yahweh. And I love the fact that when Goliath the judge, the warrior and killer of the nations of men, all by himself, stood up before Israel and all of Israel was a fake. And the little boy David came up and said, what's wrong with you, Israel? You afraid of this man? David said, I'll go up against this. Yahweh is God. I believe that Yahweh is God. Look at David said. David had no doubt. And when I was raised up by Yahweh, the so-called leadership of the so-called black men of America was afraid to stand up before the liar fellow America. Because America is known to kill leaders all over the world. My people were saying, who can fight the liar of America? Who will stand up for us against the liar of America? And Yahweh said, I will. I'll stand up. So then I see where Saul the king and the warriors of Israel began to try to outfit David with protection. But that protection that they suggested to David was carnal, mundane swords and shields formed by the hands of men. And when they put all these shields and things on David, David said, he just threw them off. So I don't need these. All I need is Yahweh and what he'll provide for me. I stood up against the lion of America. There were those who came and tried to fit me with weapons and said that we need weapons and guns and machine guns and bombs. They came telling me they knew how to make bombs and they were ready to bomb America. But I said, get away from me with that. I don't need weapons formed by the hands of man. I know Yahweh is God and he has the power to give me what I need to win against the lion of America. Everybody else is speaking and trembling. Little David went to run and charge the line. And he came up on a brook and run into the water. And he reached down and he picked up five smooth stones. He had a little stream shot. Yahweh provided the stream. And Yahweh provided the five smooth stones. And he began to run with some Yahweh gave him towards the line. And so did I. I ran up on the stream, clear stream. The water was cool. I picked up the five smooth stones of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And I'm not going to leave with what? And then the light began to make fun. Visual, you send me a little bar? Everything was at stake because the light said, Whoever we is the ruler of the people, both yours and mine. People, I know the stakes are high. This is all about who will rule over you and the rest of the world. This is about rulership.
when Yahweh spoke in the mountain of David. And David spoke out to Goliath and said, Goliath, this day shall Yahweh deliver your head to me. Yahweh is. He, he tells the enemy what he's going to do before he does it so the enemy can try to marshal his plans and get himself together and try to stop and frustrate what Yahweh wants to do so he announces up front. Not tomorrow, this <laughs> day. Now save your head, Goliath, if you can. again tonight that this day in my life Yahweh shall deliver the head of Goliath to me the head of the government shall become mine all the kingdom of the earth shall become the kingdom of Yahweh and King Christ in this day while you live you don't need money for this all you need is Yahweh and his moral teaching. And that will destroy the hairs of the wicked. <laughs> there are more with us than are with them. I come in the name of the moral God. Establishing my bounty on the earth. David was the type, I'm the anti type on the right side. That means before the type. I was before the type, then David was the type, and I'm the anti-type. That makes me the beginning, and the end. I am A. A is. A is what? A is the. The A is what? The first. That makes me the primordial vibration. Without me, there's no music because I am the primordial vibration. Research that. When you research that, you'll understand who I am. Oh, hallelujah, Yahweh. I started, I built my wholesale OA. Your enemy might teach you C, but I start mine with A. Then I set my harmony in motion. You look out in the heavens, you see harmony. Perfect harmony. Oh, hallelujah. I just gave you a scenario of rulership. There's a war on, so it had to be a war fought to determine the ruler. And Yahweh always wins the war because he's a man of war. <laughs> Exodus 15, 3. You have to learn about your God. Your God is your father. And you have to learn about your father to be like him. <laughs> you cannot be like your father and don't know him. So all week I've been introducing you to your God. Like father, like son. I'm the son of Yahweh, so I have to be like Yahweh. 
There were those who claimed to be kin to Abraham. Said they were the children of Abraham. And the son said, yes, I know, I know you're the children of Abraham already, right, but, and I hear you, but if you were the children of Abraham, you would do the work of Abraham. See what that's saying? That, that if you are of a man, then you have to do his work. That's what proves the kinship. That's what proves the relationship. That's what proves you have the same genes and chromosomes. And you can't get away from being like your father. You, you have to do his work or you're not a uh, man. So you have to study what I'm saying. I am the, the son of Yahweh. Yahweh is a particular person signified by the name which distinguishes him from all others. And I am the son of this one who is unique unlike any other. Now, if I'm doing the work of Yahweh, that proves I am his son. Work. So if you want to know what my father is like, check out my work. If you want to know what I'm supposed to be like, check out my father's work. And if we are doing the same work, then we're one. Now, if you have a different father than I have, I assure you, you're doing a different kind of work. And my work show that my father is greater than yours. And you can say what you want to about your father. I'm testifying not only verbally but through my work that my father is the creator. Before the beginning, he was the creator. Since my father is the creator, the only way I could be his son is to create. Oh, oh yeah, I have to create something. See, I can't sit around and and holler, I'm the son of the creator and don't create anything. I have to, huh? it is incumbent upon me. When I look at what kind of creator is my father? He is a man that creates something out of nothing. And he's the only man that create, can create something out of nothing and then sustain it against all opposition. See, a lot of folks good stuff that is gone. Solomon built the temple, you may worship Solomon, but see that Solomon and the temple is gone. In order for me to be the son of Yahweh, the creator who creates something out of nothing, I have to also create something out of nothing and demonstrate it to the world. Now you have to admit that the so-called black man of America has been reduced to nothing. And I have come among you by myself 
and have created the tribe of Judah out of nothing. We store in Israel out of nothing. Building and laying a foundation without the help of other nations. See, that's why if you don't believe I'm God, you have to believe my work. I'm doing the work of God. I'm doing the kind of work that, that you want God to do. Everything I read, everything that Yahweh created, he said. He, he didn't wait on you to say it. He said, ain't that good? That's good, ain't it? <laughs> That is good. I did it, and I'm not egocentric. It's just good. I'm not egotistical. It's good. Let me see you create something better. See, you have to leave this planet and this solar system and go beyond the nothing that I created then create nothing outside of the nothing I've already created. You can't escape my power. I created nothing. I, I created all, and nothing is a part of all. Nothing has to exist in order for me to take nothing and make something. So you can't get beyond my created power because I created the infinity of nothing. And the only way you can exceed me as God is go beyond nothing. No way you can do that to see you exist. And you only exist through my creation. If you look at my body, you might be confused, but maybe you need to close your eyes. <laughs> then you'll hear the man and Yahweh talking. <laughs> Let your mind dwell on that. Think about these things. And I'm the son of this man, Yahweh. I created the universe, I created the earth, and I stood outside of my creation. And then I created the earth, then I stepped inside and came on it. Walked in it. And then come to my own. And the only see me now. Why? Because they don't know me. They think I look just like them. But as we learn this week, that's because you look at the outward appearance. <laughs> How Yahweh looks at the heart and the mind of a man. So you're going to have to come up off the, off the terrestrial level. You're going to have to come up out of the earthly level. You're going to have to come up out of the mundane level. You're going to have to come up out of the mud and the dirt level. The thinking. And approach the divine mind of Yahweh. The only way you can be elevated. I am divine now. That's why I invite you to come and learn of me. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. And when you learn of me, you become God. So I'm the only man who has the power to make you God. Some people can tell you you are God, but they can't make you God. They don't have the wisdom to make you and qualify you to become God. <laughs> I have the power to make you God. It's my pleasure to do so, and yet I'm not threatened by you. That makes me the mighty God. I'm happy to make you God. Love it. Isn't that wonderful? How many of you would like to be God? 
Amen. Amen. See, if you don't want to be God-like, you are really out of it. You need a lot of prayer. What makes us the sons and daughters of Yahweh is that we want to be like him when we learn of him. Until my coming, you didn't want to be like Yahweh. Fine, you didn't know. Every one of you are creators. You're created. Every one of you are created. And you enjoy seeing creativity in another one of you. It makes you feel real proud and real good to see it. You admire it. They draw to the soul. The more creative one of us is, the more we enjoy it. The more happy we feel. It is something about being a part of the Creator, and when you experience that one that had some of Him in Him, and He allows Yahweh the Creator to express Himself through Him, we all can feel that. We relate to that. And we never get enough. Joy to the soul. And I'm here to say, return to Yahweh and let your mind become one with my mind. And there is nothing that we imagine to do can be returned from us. That's Yahweh's time. And I'm taking a handful of people across America and demonstrating that. Look what I'm demonstrating. I've done more in seven years than what people have done in the lifetime of a hundred years. I'm peerless. Absolutely peerless. giving glory to my creator. He's my father. And as I told you last night, he is your father too. But he raised me up to show you what you can become. I'm the king. I'm not a king, I am the king. Of Israel, and I'm the prince of all the kings of the earth. That means above all the kings. I am above all the kings of the earth. If you don't believe me, you have the mind of the liar. In the last chapter today, if you didn't believe that, or he would have submitted right there and kept his head and gave up trying to rule. So now he has set down his decree. <laughs> what kind of man is Yahweh? This is a 15 3. Read. The Lord Yahweh is a man of war. The Lord Yahweh is his name. Please turn to sight. You must know his name. That other man, Yahweh, is a man of war. In order for me to be his son, I must be a man of war. And Yahweh can't lose. Being his son, neither can I. So you don't have an Air Force, a Navy, an Army, a Marine. You don't have a CIA and an FBI and, and everybody else's business. Right, I don't need it. 
That's what will prove that I'm God, is that I win the war without that. See, I'm winning now. I'm winning your mind away from your winning. I'm actually coming as a thief in the night, opening up your prison house, and setting the captives free. And then you walk around in the front of your cap car, boldly in white, saying, I don't belong to you anymore. I was once bound by you, but the God of heaven, Yahweh, has set me free. He sent an angel into the pen and house like a big jump. I'm calling her up to coach. Shit, Luther, to the top door. And the guards have to stand and just watch you walk out of the prison house of America into the freedom and light of Yahweh. I'm a man of war. So when you study war, a man, what that means strategy. <laughs> See, that means Yahweh is a supreme strategist. He has an answer already foreordained against any plan of the enemy. He has already set up a defense against the enemy's offense. The doors and then check me. Then take the king and his heart. My enemy doesn't know how to fight me. Because I'm the supreme strategist. He could win if I fought on his level. You think he's going to sell you a gun to shoot him with? No, I have another strategy that he can't find. He can't understand. See, we, we fight not against men, but against wicked men, spiritually and happily. <laughs> a call of mine can't understand the war, I'm, the battle I'm fighting. I'm fighting a spiritual war. It's all about who can win the right. See, Yahweh is the righteous God. So his enemy has to be an unrighteous God. He has to be a God of unrighteousness. Yahweh is a moral God, so the enemy of Yahweh has to be the God of immorality. Yahweh is a good God, so his enemy, his opponent, has to be an evil God. And then, to show how powerful Yahweh is, he allowed his enemy to deceive the whole world. At my coming among you, the whole world is deceived. That would say I wouldn't have a chance to win. <laughs> the enemy of Yahweh has the people of the world thinking the opposite of what truth and reality is. And then I come and stand alone in the world among a dead people, dry bones. Imagine the work, the miracle I must create to resurrect dry bones and even the bones are scattered. And I got to go along and hit the foot bone, toe bone to the foot bone. Put the foot bone to the ankle bone. Put the leg bone to the ankle bone and then hook the kneecap to that. And then hook the leg bone to the thigh bone. And then hook the thigh bone to the hip bone. 
then hook the hip bone to the back bone, and then hook the back bone to the neck bone, and then hook the neck bone to the head bone. And when I finish that job, all I have is a dry skeleton. <laughs> no wonder I ask Yahweh, can these dry bones with this? Look what you gave me a minute. I did this, and these suckers are just a dry skeleton here. Yahweh said, keep on prophesying to these bones. Prophesying to bones? I have to be an unusual man just to believe I could make some progress prophesying against some job off. Anybody with sense wouldn't try that. <laughs> Nobody's ever seen a dead man get up, especially all this, everything about him is wasted away. The world would walk by laughing. The world has walked by laughing at me taking dry bones, hooking them up together. Oh, look at that with me, God. I see you What do you think he is, God? He said, you don't make these bones live. Well, I'll tell you. Yeah, I'm telling you. Look at this. After I hook the bones together, then I have to put food up on it. That's that muscular structure. Everybody still laughs. And when you put a bunch of pulleys, man, and put a bunch of strings on the bone, he makes the bone move like they're alive, but they don't have no life in them. Look at that. They ain't got no brain or nothing. <laughs> no blood, no cells. Then I have to turn around and put meat up on top of those things. They have to make blood flow. And then in all this, you still land, they ain't got no brain. Can't think of nothing. You're in a comatose state. In a deep coma. And everybody's afraid I'm getting ready to raise up Frankenstein. Not Then they said, if I, if I do get you up with the body walking around, all you'll ever be is a zombie. They'd be making so much fun of you and my work in the movie. Because the zombie always had a white master. But in the movie, one day, the zombie turned on the master, remember? Master scared of you zombies walking around. They're scared of you even becoming a zombie. But you still be taking his orders till something happens. Think about my job. See, I'm a man. I'm the man of Yahweh. So since he's good, I have to be good. Since he's an honorable God, I have to be honorable. Since he's a righteous God, I have to be righteous. Now you come and check my mind, check my teachings, check my actions, and you'll discover I am indeed a man of God. He's qualified me to be his son, but these are his characteristics that you learn, I exhibit those characteristics. Then I have a unique job of resurrecting the dead to become the sons of God. So when you first wake up, you see me standing already up in front of you. And you know I'm the one that woke you up this morning and started you on your way. To freedom, justice, prosperity, in first Chronicles 24, I showed you that Yahweh chose me. Then I proved to you that you don't have to be jealous because he chose me to be seen. 
Some might have had to be changed. Someone had to be responsible to prove that Yahweh is one. But Yahweh also chose you to move with me, through me, because of me. Not independent of me, because I'm the one that raised you up the rule. So you have to always honor me because I'm the one raising you up the rule. It's already mine, and I'm giving it to you, and it's my pleasure to do so. I'm the only rich man that will share his riches with you, all I have. I don't give you some, I share everything I have with you. I give it to you physically, but it's not spiritually. So my claim is superior to yours until you become a spiritual son of Yahweh like me. Then we become what? In Yahweh? I'm here to accomplish that with you. So you would be out of your mind and saying to be jealous of me when I am here to claim myself. I'm here to make you exactly into myself. A duplicate of me. So that when the world see you, they'll see me. And I'm something to see. If you study me, you learn that. But if you have not learned of me, then I sound a lot of ways to you. First Chronicles 24 says, Yahweh chose me to be king over Israel. And he chose you as Judah to be the ruler. Father, you need me as king, but you don't know how to rule. You want the rule, but you don't know. Some of you had a rule so bad, you go get a dog, beat him up. <laughs> beat the cat up. Buy a bird, put him in a cage, try to rule over him. Try to rule something. Some of you get a man and have a ball ruling over. I ruin that. He do it, I tell you. And then every brother, he's looking for a woman to rule over. I'm the man! <laughs> and the sisters let him for 10 years. I mean, it's terrible games that you be playing on each other out here. You all be playing for me, man. And both of you are the victim going nowhere. <laughs> you wasting all your energy playing games on each other. While everybody else is ruling. Including over you. I'm here to put an end to that. Under the king of Israel, Yahweh and Yahweh, you become one with me in Yahweh so that we have peace in our home. You can't have peace in your home except there's peace in you. And if only one of you have peace, then you have half a home. And your enemies use sitcom television to destroy your idea of unity. Have you ever noticed how Everybody that looks like you on television, they put each other down. Was that, that thing with JJ or whatever, the good time? I mean, JJ and his sister is always capping on each other. Before the world, making fun of each other, down each other, finding something peculiar about each other to ridicule before the world. And then you sit around like a fool, tune in, laughing at somebody look like you, down somebody look like you.
I'm going to change that. Because all of you are beautiful and young. And you have to come to see the beauty in your brother and your sister. And you can only see that in your So the, the enemy of Yahweh, your enemy, has taught you that the man is superior over the woman. So then to make sure you are at war with each other, they come up with women's will. Women's liberation. I'm here to change all of that. By giving each one of us, male and female, the love of Yahweh in our house for each other. First for ourselves, then each other. Then we can live together in peace. As husband and wife and family. Then we become one as a family, as families, we become a community. Then our community become a nation of love. Stop my soul. Is that true in New York? Yes, sir. Is that true in Georgia? Yes, sir. Is that true in California? Yes, sir. Is that true in Washington, D.C.? Yes, sir. Is that true in Carolina? Yes, sir. Is that true in Michigan? Is that true in Illinois? Yes, sir. Is that true in Missouri? Yes, sir. Is that true in Texas? Yes, sir. Is that true in Florida? I didn't name everybody, I just let you see. So this proves you in the army of Yahweh. And it also proves that we all march to the same tune. It also proves that one day I'll have an exceedingly great army. This concludes part three of Preparing for Rulership.